Hello, welcome to Jewish Culture and Jewish Awareness. My name is Dustin Hausner. I'm the Jewish Outreach and Program Director at the Wayne YMCA. Our Jewish programming is funded through the Jewish Federation of Northern New Jersey. Uh, today, I'm really excited about the topic we're going to be discussing because it's something that I know a little bit about, but I certainly want to grow much more knowledge of. And the guest that I have today is someone I greatly respect and is someone who's going to be able to do their very best to explain um, Israeli elections and how it, it works in Israel. So I want to introduce uh, someone really wonderful, um, a good friend of my family friend, uh, Yassi. Yassi, it is so good to have you on the show. Hey, Dustin. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. Kind of stormy outside, but pretty good. <laughs> Well, um, before we actually get started, because um, you are talking to me from Israel, um, I should ask, um, because unfortunately, we know um, the coronavirus is still very active around the world. How are you doing? How is everyone in Israel doing? Um, I hope all of you are doing okay. Personally, thank God I'm doing okay. My family's doing okay. Um, it's kind of divided to how to look at it in Israel. In Israel, we've been in a lockdown for almost two weeks. Hmm. Um, we're probably going to be in a lockdown for another two weeks. Um and we've been having around 9,000 new cases every day for the past few days, which uh, we've been breaking the limit every day. But at the same time, Israel has uh, been giving the, the vaccine to their citizens daily. We've been having almost, I think today they're gonna break a level of giving 200,000 citizens vaccine. And we've, I think we're gonna be passing the 2 million citizens today, which is more than 20% of the citizens. And, the prime minister put a goal that more, all, like around 5 million citizens should be having the second round of the vaccine um, by sometime in March. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not easy days for the economy. It's not easy days for the health, for the health um, system. But I mean, we're finally seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. So hopefully, hopefully sometime in March, we'll be able to totally open up and Passover is coming soon. So hopefully this Passover will be a special one. Uh, well, I'm hoping obviously for the vaccine to be spread out as soon as possible. People in Israel yeah. be well and safe. And look, if Israel would be able to have, you know, a get together Passover, that would be a, a really wonderful thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping only the best. I'm sure viewers are wanting the same. So th thank you for giving. Hopefully. Yeah. So um, let me ask you, because um, I feel like it's a very big subject, um, Israeli elections. But um, yeah. part of the reason I wanted to speak to you about it is one, I know you're someone who's voted for since you were legally able to vote. So you've been um, not knowledgeable in local elections, but also it's, it was announced not too long ago that Israel will be having its fourth election in about two yeah. years, which as an American sounds very unusual. Ridiculous. Yeah, I'll put, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> And I say that with great love because, yeah. you know, I yeah. know your system is a parliamentary system, which we'll get into a little bit, but um, I was wondering if in general you could talk a little bit about, because again, in the United States, it's usually Republican, Democrat, uh, you vote for the person and w whichever the party gets the most wins, whereas a parliamentary system, especially in Israel, it's very different. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit just to give us an idea of what is, what goes into an Israeli election. Yeah, okay, so um, I'll start with the parliament in Israel. In Israel, you have a parliament of 120 seats. And 120 seats, is it's not like in America that it's Republican, Democrat, or Independent. You have too many parties. You have the Likud party. Um, today, you have Likud, you have Kahol Avan, Blue and White, you have um, Yeshatid, um, you have Meretz, Havoda, uh, Lieberman, Yamina, uh, the Hasidics have two parties. The Arabs have one party. I mean, I might have forgotten some, but you could you could understand how how tough it gets. Um, and and the thing is, to to win an election, I mean, you could win an election by the popular vote, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be prime minister. Mm. Um, and to to make a coalition in Israel, you have to have more than sixty seats supporting you inside the Knesset. Okay. If you don't have sixty seats supporting you, you do not have a government. And the reason Israel is going into its fourth elections, the first three elections that we went through the past couple of years is because no one had more than 60 seats to, to make a coalition. And when you're gonna have 60 seats, there's I think 60 or 80 days from the moment the elections are done to make a coalition. If you don't get a coalition, then Israel automatically goes to elections. So it happened for three times, the third time um, Benny Gantz um, decided to make a coalition with the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, 
which I thought was a good move at that point, at that point, because whatever was happening with the Corona and, and, and you know, like enough was enough because people could say they don't want to sit with Bibi, they don't want to sit with Gantz, but eventually the country needs some, some stability. The country needed a government. Um, so we had a government um, at the beginning. Again, I was okay with it, but personally, the government didn't really work well for the, for the past half a year that they were in, in, in uh, leadership, let's say. Um, there have been arguments inside the government almost daily. Um, important moves did not happen. Um, so it got to a point that I think like less than a month ago, they decided going again to elections, which on one hand is ridiculous, but again, sometimes they say elections is better than a government that does not work good. Mm. So, yeah, so. so. So let me, um, and just for clarification purposes, so um, Benjamin Netanyahu, the current prime minister, is part of a Likud and the um, other gentleman you had mentioned who was in the joint leadership, he was part of uh, Blue and White uh, political party, if I recall correctly. So um, yeah. I was doing a little bit of homework beforehand just so I wouldn't be completely ignorant of uh, this discussion. And yeah. I was impressed, I was amazed that I think it's about 15 political parties and you were naming a bunch of them just now that have seats, which yeah. again, as an American trying to imagine that is just incredible. And Crazy. I think the, fresh, yeah. the threshold is it's, um, it's not like in the United States where you vote on a person, you vote on the party and it has to be 3.25% yeah. of the vote. If you get over that, then you get, a, get some sort of seat. Is, is that fairly yeah. accurate? So um, in Israel, you have the, the, the minimum amount of votes that you need to get to get inside the, the Knesset, inside the parliament, mm -hmm. which um, the minimum seats is four seats. I think it's around 3% um, of the votes you need to get in to have a minimum of four seats. It used to be two seats. I think a long time ago, it was even one seat. But they try to make it go up for there to be for it to be more st stability and not as much small parties inside the government. Um, as we see, it didn't really help a lot because there's still too many parties inside the, the parliament itself. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it, it's much more complicated than that these days because it, the the politics in Israel used to be left and right, mm -hmm. and I personally think it still is left and right behind the scenes or like they're just not showing it mm -hmm. but the main thing today is pro bb and against bb mm -hmm. and that's what's happening today when people go to elections which which personally my ideology i don't believe in that way because eventually you you um when i go to the the uh, election to vote i want to vote who i want who is yes and not who no personally i think that's the, the right thing to do when you go to elections is to vote for someone you want not for someone you don't want, because when you vote for someone you don't want, you don't know necessarily what you're going to get instead. Um, so I'm totally, I mean, I could understand people that are against Bibi. I am for him. It's okay. I mean, it's a democracy. Everyone could think whatever they want to think. It's really, really okay. Um, but uh, eventually, I don't believe the strategy of that way going to elections because it just won't work. I mean, the past three elections, um, the party that was against Bibi mm -hmm. got... Um, almost as many votes as the Likud each each election. I mean, there's three elections. It was very tight, all three of them. Mm. And and still, the fact is, Israel did not get a stable government. Israel did not have anything steady. And I mean, it was the 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 most votes, um, let's say, a left party got for a long time, and it still did not change reality. Mm. So, I hope sometime soon we'll get back to the ideology. Um, way of looking in politics because that's the way to make things change and that's the way to make things work. And we'll see what I mean. These elections are so yes, BB, no BB, but we'll see what the we'll see what the results will bring. Well, it brings up a really good question because, um, to my understanding, the formation of even the blue and white was a bunch of different groups that came together as kind of the yeah. no BB group, basically. But you know, you have um, again multiple different political parties um, that are running for seats. And, you know, you said it's no longer really, do you, in your view, as right and left, but each one has some sort of right, center right, religious, non-religious. Is there particular issues in Israel right now, or even just the last two years, that have created such a splintering of the groups? Or has this been fairly consistent, but this is kind of, it, it's become BB or no BB, in, in your view? So, Let's say you, you say sometimes 
two two Jewish people could sit in a room and there'll be a million opinions. So the problem is today that it's a mixture of everything. Okay. Because you have you have today also um, the economy, which since the pandemic started, sure. um, a lot of problems with the economy, not only in Israel, all around mm. the world. Absolutely. Um, whoever's, of course, against BB points out at him uh, showing the problems. Um, but whoever looks at the big picture sees what's happening, like not all around the world, because the pandemic didn't really hit any, everywhere, but plenty of, of Western places around the world were hit. The economy was hit pretty bad with, uh, with this pandemic. Mm. Um, the people that are against BB, ha- they point out whatever ha- um, is happening with this trial, um, which also that you could divide it into two people that were for BB mm-hmm. think that he's being, um, it's like a witch hunt and the people that are against him are saying, um, if he has three, um, I forgot the words in English, um, you could, you could probably help me out with that, with his three stuff against him in, in, in court. Yeah. Um, so... So the thing is that if he has those three stuff, then he cannot be prime minister. The thing is the law in Israel approves for the prime minister to be prime minister until he's invicted, if he's invicted, um, if I'm explaining this correctly. Yeah. The reason that the law is like that is because they didn't want an option for any, um, let's say small worker in the justice department or whatever can make can fall down a, a prime minister just for giving him um, again, I'm, I'm losing those words of what no, you're doing against him. Yeah, no, no, the it, I forgot what it's called in English. Um, the, I mean, the three charges against him that he might charges. Have. Sorry, yeah, yeah the, the charges against him. So, so the, the law in Israel approves for the prime minister, even if he has charges against him, to still be prime minister unless he's invicted. Okay, because charges he could always give against anyone if it's not proved in court and they're not invicted, then it didn't happen. So imagine it doesn't matter who is prime minister, when they're prime minister, imagine each prime minister, you can make them fall down just from charging him for something that you don't even know if it's true. So, so that, that's, that's also a main thing here in Israel of people saying he's been charged three times, he can't be prime minister. And then other people saying, wait, let's wait to see what court says. If court says he's guilty, he won't be prime minister, but let's wait, let's give him the chance to prove, to prove the charges wrong. So that's, that's another main thing um, in the elections here of people that are against him. And I mean, people that are for him, they're like, okay, listen, Israel went into this pandemic in an amazing economy situation. I mean, if Israel wasn't very strong with the economy before the pandemic, I'm guessing Israel would have been in a very, very, very bad place today. Much worse than it is now with the economy. Um, people that are for him are seeing, seeing him literally fight and, and split blood to get the vaccine to Israel more than any other country in the world. Um, people that are for him are seeing him do peace in the Arab world that beforehand, you couldn't do that peace without going ahead with the Palestinian uh, issue. And he's showing the world that it could happen, it could be done. So there's really a list of stuff that, that people see what he did for the last 10 years. I mean, whoever's against him will still be against him. But surprisingly, and I was saying Bibi, no Bibi, not really left and white in these elections. You could see people from the right going against him. And also some people from the left that are not necessarily in the parliament, but some journalists from the left that are for him all of a sudden. They're like, guys, what's happening? You could be against him, but... Well, it's uh, but- no, well, it's interesting about your... The system, particularly the parliamentary system, and having, um, you know, creating the coalition is you could have situations where you have like a far right religious group. And I, and I want to be clear that saying far right or left in the United States is not the equivalent of Israel. They're different countries. They have, you know, their own views and philosophies. I just don't want to make it sound like it's the same exact thing. But, you know, you could have someone who's like a religious right group, co- you know, join a coalition with a more liberal secular group. And that's a fairly normal thing. Yeah. It's not necessarily yeah. ideological purity, as long as you're able to make whatever arrangements you need to, to get um, the 61 and over for the parliament, um, of the parliamentary yeah. system to govern. In Israel, you for almost for the whole time, of the whole history, so you always had a mixture of different kind of parties inside the coalition. Mm-hmm. Um, from left, from right, it's, it's always like a mixture of stuff. It's very rare, to rare, it's very rare for you to have only a very uh, left coalition or a very right coalition. Okay. Um, there was only a right coalition from 2015 to 2000 and 
2019, I think. The thing is that there was one party that was considered a right-wing party, but people inside their list wasn't really right-wing and they stopped some reforms that uh, some moves that the right really wanted to do. So it wasn't really a, whole, a totally white, uh, right um, coalition. So if let's say you look at the, the Hasidic parties, which they're always, um, they're always an issue to talk about because when they're in the coalition, people say they take all the money, they don't do anything, which I'm totally against all this kind of stuff because eventually they're almost 20% of the people in Israel. Um, they do pay tax. Some of them do go to the army. Each, uh, each year, more and more Hasidics go to the army, go out and work. So I'm like, I'm not, I'm, I don't believe in attacking them. I believe in hugging them and making them more part of the society. Same thing with the Arab society. Um, but a lot of people try to connect the Hasidics to, to Bibi and say Bibi buys the Hasidics and that way he's the only way he's prime minister. But if you go back in history, you'll see that the left wing, whenever they were in government, they did not do it without the Hasidics. So, so, so eventually you, need, you do need st uh, stability. You do need a big amount of parties um, in the coalition. Um, even though you need more than 60, the goal is to have at least more than 65, 70, so you could have a stable coalition that if you're around the 60, then each, each Knesset member could decide to try to say, okay, if, you're not, if I'm not getting this, then I'm going to make the government fall. Or a small party that if, let's say, you have 65, then there's no party less than seven. So that means if one party that's seven and all of a sudden they go out, then you're only 58. And that party could say, you know what? If I don't get this today, even though it's not in the government uh, agreement, then I'm making this government fall. But when you have usually more than 70, so, so usually when you have a nice amount of, of, of Knesset members, so it's very hard for the government to fall. And then you have a stable, stable government that could be a whole four or four and a half years of, of, of uh, leadership. Well, to your point, um, you know, the question about secular or, or religious, I mean, that's been a question that's been since the founding of Israel with Ben Gurion and so on. Yeah. And so, forth. so there's always been that question of, you know, partnerships and balance and things like that. I'm curious for this time around with the coronavirus, because obviously in the United States and yeah. elections, we had to make quite a number of adjustments in order to vote. Has there been any talk yeah. of, you know, doing elections differently because it's literally your election i believe is in march it's only it's not very far yeah. away so is there certain precautions yeah. that are going to be taken or is it you know kind of so last year but you know with masks yeah so there's not going to be any mail in israel okay that's gotcha. not going to happen here um that's not going to happen in israel they are talking about a situation that there might be drive-ins oh okay that people will come with a drive-in with their um, ID and vote. Um, but if everything goes as planned, then they won't need any of it because if, if they get to the 5 million citizens that got their vaccine by the beginning of March or the second week of March, then everyone can go vote regularly and, and nothing special will need to be done. Um, there is something in Israel that it's called um, handicap. Um, places to vote for that's for people that usually can go to their original uh, place to vote okay. and 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 they could go if they're sick or if they're handicapped they could go vote at that place um, but it, it, you have to prove that you're sick or you have to prove that you're handicapped and then you could vote in that kind of place of election so so um, what they had in the I think it was the third elections they did have special tents for people that were isolated or had Corona. And it seems like they're gonna do the same now, um, that if people are isolated or if they have Corona, they'll, they'll go and vote in those specific places, but it won't be in huge amounts that will make the whole system change. Like again, no, no, um, no mail voting, um, or the system itself won't um, change in a, in a critical way. No, I'm not going to ask you who you think is going to win in the sense of, you know, who, if the BB is going to still be prime minister or not, I'm, you know, no, I don't think anyone could. You could, you, you could ask, <laughs> I won't know how to answer because it's, it's too early. Yeah. It's too early of, of the, of the time. I mean, the, what's happening now when both from the, the pro BB and against BB, I mean, more against BB, there's, if we were talking about 15 parties Please. or Kahol, or the blue and white, they had three parties, it was connected from three parties they're broken into pieces. Today you have so many little parties on the left wing, mostly on the left wing. I mean, we think they're gonna connect eventually, 
but what's happening today, no one can tell you what the what the political map is going to look like in a month. The the lists, um, whoever wants to run, they have to sign up in another 21 days. In 21 days, you could talk to me again, and we'll know exactly how many parties are running. I'll be able to help you guess who's going to pass the minimum to get in and who's not. Um, I'm usually pretty accurate when it comes to that, when it comes to that kind of stuff, but it's just too early. Um, it's just too early to, 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 to guess what's going to be. What I can say is, is um, that BB went through a lot during the last year as, as the leader of Israel. Um, it started very good with him, the pandemic, because he, he, people really believe that he managed it good. The past half a year, actually, since he made a government with blue and white, and since um, a lot of authority, authorities were taken out of his hands, I mean, before the, the government, before the dual government um, became the government, so he made all these decisions. Since the government with blue and white, so um, blue and white had a veto on each decision, each decision had to go together with Benny Gantz. So, um, like I said, there wasn't really a good government for the last half a year, and Israel looked like a mess. No trust in the government. Everything was everything did not work good, but still, all that together, he still has in almost all the polls around thirty seats, which is which is pretty high. So, what I do believe is if the vaccine will work work good, and Israel will go out of this pandemic probably first in the world. So, I think it'll, it'll be for his good eventually. So, for your personal opinion, because again, I I don't want to speculate on who will win or who will not. But do you yeah. think regardless that there is hope that this time around, no matter how the election ends up, that there will be an actual sustainable coalition? Or is there feeling that uh, here we go again and that, you know. No. So I, I personally believe that there will be okay. uh, a government after this election. And there's, there's two main reasons that I believe that. The first main reason is that what what made the most, um, let's say, what made the situation very unsettable for the last three elections is, I'm, I'm going back to the left and right. Yeah. You have the left-wing votes, you have the right-wing votes, and you have the Hasidic votes, and you have the Arab votes. But the, the Hasidic votes are with the right-wing, they, they count, they're counted together with the right-wing, okay. and the Arab votes are, are counted together with the left-wing. Okay. But... What happened was, is when the blue and white uh, party became together with Benny Gantz, Sarah Lapid, and uh, Bogi Alon, mm -hmm. so they were able to make, um, I won't say a, a false um, claim, but they made a lot of people from the white wing vote for them, mm -hmm. which I think it was around four to five mandates that voted for, from the right wing that voted for a middle left party. Okay. Now, when that happened, when that happened, it just made the whole situation unsteady because it was all around one seat, two seats. BB got 58. We're going to we're going to elections again. On the first round, BB, BB got 60, and we still went to elections. Mm -hmm. And if there were the two, three, four seats that weren't in, in blue and white, and they were somewhere in the right wing, we would have had a steady election back then in in April 2019. And just for you to understand why we went to elections in April 2019 is Naftali Bennett was missing 1,400 votes to get in. Mm. And if he would have had 1,400 votes and he would have got in, the right wing would have had around 63 seats on that election. And then we, would have, then we wouldn't have had elections. But the, the, the bottom line I'm saying now is after blue and white literally fell apart, in the last month or so, and all the parties that are, are rising up from the left, I personally see they don't even have one mandate from the right mm. in these elections. And even though um, people on the right wing are saying they'll sit with BB, they won't sit with BB, I don't know, I really don't know what's gonna be. I, I don't know what's gonna be. But I think it will be much easier to make a coalition this time instead of the last three times. And if you want to also point out something that that's pretty interesting is, is um, in the past month, BB is working very hard to get Arab votes 
which which is surprising for a lot of people, um, but it could be a game changer because what's happening in Israel is that you have one Arab uh, United Party in the in the government. They're not in the coalition, but they're in, they're in the parliament. Sorry, not in the government. Um, but a lot of Arab citizens don't see them as their representatives in the in the parliament. Um, most of the issues that the Arab um, Knesset members, parliament members deal with the more Palestinian issues. Um, they voted against the peace, uh, the peace agreements with the, the Emirates and with Bahrain. And the Arab citizens living here, a lot of them don't like that. A lot of them want eventually to be more secure. There's a lot of security problems in the Arab villages. Some people call some villages like the wild, wild west. A lot of murders are happening and eventually they want security for their citizens. They want to live a regular life. They want to live in peace with the Jewish citizens are living around them. I mean, you could go into Haifa, you could go to Nazareth, you could go to Shfaram, you could go to all around the world and, and Jews and Arabs live together. And, and they don't find the, the Knesset members, the parliament members, a representative of what they really want. So BB um, for the past 10 years, he transferred, it's not that he gave the money, he invested around 15 billion shekels. It's not all been invested yet, but it's being invested for already a few good years in roads, trains, um, systems, um, electricity, um, sewage, all, all, all this kind of stuff that Israel did not do in a lot of our villages for a long, long time. He's been investing that for the last 10 years in, a, in a, an amount that makes Arab citizens saying, wait, he's doing peace with Arab countries. He's bringing us budgets that we've never had. Yes, there's still a lot to do, but if he gets one, two, three mandated seats from Arab votes, that's a game changer. And he's been putting a lot of effort in it. And it'll be very interesting to see if, if they go with him because, I mean, I know, I know some that are with him um, that I talked to them in the road. They're saying, yeah, we're voting for Bibi. Of course, they're going to, some say, of course, they're not going to be voting for him. It's a process. It won't happen that fast. But, but it looks like it's going towards there. And, and personally, I think it'll be amazing for Israel. So the last thing I'll mention is about the elections. And they, again, I don't want to belabor um, a point. You know, Bibi Netanyahu is the current prime minister. He's been there since, I believe, 2009. So he's been there for quite a number of years. Yeah. The longest serving prime minister, um, to my knowledge. I, the closest we would have as a reference would be FDR. But, you know, but to your... Actually, you, you could check Merkel in, in Germany, I think it's from 2005. Exactly. Always when people tell me Bibi's the longest, so I say, guys, what about Merkel in Germany? Is that okay? So, I will, in Israel, I'll rephrase my question. Very, very valid. In, in Israel, yeah, 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 yeah. In Israel, yeah. So, in, in Israel, he passed Ben Gurion like a couple of years ago. Okay. Something like that, or a year and a half ago. So um, this election cycle, obviously you'll have the people that are pro and anti uh, Netanyahu. You'll have people that you know will respond to the economy as a reason to vote. Um, obviously, whatever they feel about the, the rollout of the vaccine and the coronavirus handling, um, I would say, is there any other predominant issue for Israelis that you think are going to bring people out to the polls this time around? Or do you think those three are kind of the main dominant things that will be um, on the ballot for many people? I think the most dominant thing that is going to be in the next elections is economy. And, and eventually um, people will say we're against BB. I'm, I'm going to say like this, people that are against BB, it's going to be because of economy and their, the way they look at it okay. or because of what's happening with his trial. People that are for BB are also going to say because of the economy and because they want a strong prime minister like he is. So the thing with the economy is also divided into two because there's people that um, blame him for what's happening with the pandemic. And on the other side, there's people saying, wait, it's all around the world. It's not only in Israel. It's not what's happening in Israel and that's it. So if, the, if everything opens up in March, like I think it's gonna open up and all of a sudden people are gonna be sitting in restaurants, going to theaters, going around, people are gonna get back to work. So, so it's gonna feel different. Yes, yes, a group of people have been extremely hurt during this pandemic um, and it's sad stories, like really, really, really sad stories. And I wish that they were the only, pe they were the only ones that were getting the, the money from the country because they needed the most. Um, but the numbers that people are talking about 
people are saying there's a million unemployed in Israel during the pandemic, which it's far from that number. And also a big amount of the people that are unemployed are getting paychecks from the government monthly. They're only getting like around 70, 75%, but they're getting paychecks monthly from the government because they're unemployed. And as soon as everything opens up, most of them will get back to work. A lot of them are restaurant workers, um, um, entertainment, um, shows, uh, um, uh, what's it called? Again, cinema, um, restaurant. I mean, all those places in, in one click, eventually we'll get back to work. So the million isn't really a million. Most of the people that are sitting at home do get monthly um, paychecks from the government. Um, whoever is, is in the most problem are the independents, the home, the people that are their own, the, have their own businesses. Um, they, they, they got hurt the most during this um, pandemic. Um, I'm also an independent worker. Thank God I woke up pretty fast um, with, with everything that was happening. I mean, I think it was after the second week. I'm like, okay, something's happening here. This is not going to be a regular, um, regular fast issue. Um, I was able to realize that a lot of work that I usually get during summertime, I will not be getting. And I just very fast changed the way I do stuff at work and very fast look for other customers that I had a feeling they won't get hurt from the pandemic. So thank God for that. But a lot of people were hurt during this pandemic. So, so again, this election, I think is mostly going to be about economy, but also that is divided into two. People look at it in a good way and people look at it in the back. The, 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 the results will be whoever sees, sees it more good or more bad. Well, yes, I want to really thank you very much for not only explaining a little bit of parliamentary system, but also your thoughts on you know, the election, the issues, why, you know, we, why Israel is going into the fourth. I think a lot of this information for people who aren't paying attention seems quite unusual, but I think you've clarified a lot of important issues. And as you said, who knows what's going to happen in March, you know, uh, maybe me yeah. will follow up afterwards and, you know, you'll tell me either uh, you, I was right, you were right, you were wrong. We'll see yeah. what happens. But uh, if you want me just to add, I yeah. could add for you just a, a small important thing. I'm, I'm sure people are going to ask, yeah. why isn't there only two terms in Israel? Um, why isn't it, why, why can a prime minister be so long? Sure. So I'm those that say I'm for um, making it only two terms. Mm -hmm. I'm totally for that. But to make it two terms, you have to change the whole system. Mm -hmm. it, it will not make sense to make it two terms, but to leave the, the coalition to be the same way it is today. If, if imagine um, an American president winning, right. but he'll have to, he'll be able to be president only if he wins Congress, let's say. Mm -hmm. right. And imagine that he did not win Congress or did not win, win the Senate. And what happens then is that he doesn't have enough votes and then he could be, let's say, let's say he'll, let's say um, a Democratic president won, but he did not win Congress, but he was able to move 10 seats from the Republican Party into his coalition. And imagine that after a year or so, those 10 Republicans decided we're not with this, pre with this pre president anymore. We're leaving his government. And then what happens? The president falls. And then that's considered one term. And, and, and it just does not make sense. So yeah, the, the president elect, the, the prime minister elect has to have a full four years to prove good or prove wrong, but to work for four years. And then after that, for that to be considered one term. So I'm totally for blocking it into two terms, but the whole system has to change. Without changing the system, it just well, does your, not make sense. Well, to your point, I mean, if you have something where, let's say, a prime minister, you know, becomes the elected person and is only, you know, has like four years as one term, and then they lose the coalition in between then, then how does that get siphoned? How, it, it becomes incredibly complicated because as you said, it's a parliamentary system. And as we've seen in England and plenty of other countries, you know, you could have the same party switching prime ministers on what seems to be a dime. And it's in the middle of what would be seen as their term. Plus, you know, especially with four elections now, I mean, with that fall. So it, it definitely gets very complicated if you try to do it that way, at, at least in the model that yeah. we're talking about. So, yeah, totally. Uh, 
But so. um, is there anything else you wanted to add on as either just? Um, I don't think so. If you, if you have any more questions, I mean, I don't think I, maybe I forgot something. I'm not sure. But if you have any more questions, hmm. really feel free. No, well, like I said, maybe we'll do a, a follow-up after the elections. But um, yes, I really want to thank you for taking the time to explain sure. a lot of stuff. Um, obviously, there's a lot going on in Israel. It's, you know, as every election is, it's a very important election. So um, in the end of the day, I wish all the best to uh, our friends in Israel. And um, of course, knock on wood, uh, sooner rather than later, the vaccine will be out. Everyone will be healthy and we'll be doing celebration again so but thank you so much for your time yes i really thank you it. thank you for this opportunity and hope everything is good on your side hope america will get back as fast as possible with the vaccine with the economy i mean i miss america <laughs> I, I, if, if it was any any vaccine it probably would have been um a couple months ago visiting the state so Love hopefully you. sometime soon and and israel's waiting for you so no thank goodness we uh we have the vaccine thank goodness and we're doing all we can. I, I certainly would love to come back and visit Israel again soon. I know uh, my wife and I definitely want to bring the little one to Israel. So I'm really excited for that uh, when things get better. Um, let's just in general hope for better, better days ahead. To everyone out there watching, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope you stay safe, stay healthy, stay well. Uh, thank you and have a wonderful rest of the day.